One UI is Samsung's new Android Pie update that's still in beta, and you can flash it on your Galaxy S9, S9 Plus, S8, S8 Plus, Galaxy Note 8, or Note 9. I've been using it since the early leaks, and I've got to say my overall impressions have gotten a lot better with each new update. Of course, it still has a few bugs and problems, which I'll explain later, and various features can still change in the future. So if you're going to flash it, just keep those things in mind. I'll drop a link to an X-Day tutorial showing you how to do it. Anyways, let's talk about the biggest exclusive changes first. In One UI, various apps now have large titles that take up one third of the screen. The idea behind this wasn't clear to me at first, but once I realized that they did this to improve one-handed use, I immediately loved the concept. Samsung is known to release large phones with big beautiful displays, so to have most of their stock apps drop down all the interactable content towards the bottom of the screen seems like a great move. No longer do I need to reposition my hand to reach the top part of my phone. Apps or menus that were affected by this include Samsung's messaging app, quick settings panel, regular settings, gallery, and a few apps that have their menus drop down towards the bottom include Samsung's phone app, the camera with the modes, and messages. Another significant feature that everyone is going crazy over is system-wide dark theming. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, in the settings under display, there's a new option called night mode, and when it's enabled, it darkens all the Samsung stock apps, the settings, notifications, which is rare, and more. I always wonder when Samsung was going to support a dark theme since they've been using AMOLED panels for so many years, and I especially love that they went with a true black background with a dark gray color for the menus or notifications. It really shows that they thought this through and didn't just change the background color. Since Samsung is pushing out an Android 9.0 update, they had to follow the trend of including a gesture navigation, and the one they provided is truly amazing. They call it full screen gestures, and all they did was replace the regular back, home, and recent buttons with three bars that you can swipe up on, and they'll do all the same actions as before. It does suck that you can't use Google Assistant with these gestures, but it does give you a bit more screen real estate, and getting the hang of it is almost instantaneous. However, if you prefer sticking with the regular nav bar, they also have some sweet new icons. Samsung's messaging app, along with being more suitable for one-handed use, also supports rich communication services for messaging. So if your friend has a Galaxy device running One UI, then you can text them and that conversation will receive special benefits, including typing indicators, changing the names of group chats, texting over Wi-Fi, sending and receiving high-resolution images, sending large files, and seeing when a person has read your message. Just keep in mind that some carriers, such as T-Mobile, only use a proprietary service for their RCS, so it can still be a very exclusive feature depending on the type of carrier you're on. And I know there are messaging services out there, such as WhatsApp or Facebook Messenger, that have had these features for years, but it's a step up for those living in the States since most people here who own an Android still use stock SMS because of iMessage users. Moving on, the quick settings panel now expands to fit the entire screen for better one-handed use. It kind of sucks that you can no longer see any of your notification icons while you're on this panel, but I do enjoy that these tiles are still expandable. In other words, I can still quickly switch Wi-Fi networks, Bluetooth devices, change the sound profile and more without having to jump into the settings. Google removed this feature in AOSP, but I'm glad Samsung didn't jump on that bandwagon. Lift to wake is also a thing now, so when the phone is flat on a table, you can pick it up and the display will turn on. This feature is found within the settings under advanced features and motion and gestures. I also want to point out the new changes in the recents menu. The apps are now displayed horizontally instead of vertically, very similar to the Pixel 3. However, along with the dock, you also get a search bar and a close all button, so you don't have to scroll all the way to the end to just clear everything. Surprisingly, if you're rocking a Galaxy S9 or Note 9, you can still use Substratum themes. But if you have a Galaxy S8 or Note 8, the most recent updates to One UI quietly block Substratum themes or Swift installer support. It's what happened to the Pixels and other OEMs I've followed due to security measures. So even though I can still use custom themes on my S9 Plus, I'm expecting Samsung to block this in a future update. But for the time being, I'm using Flux White and I haven't looked back. Those are pretty much all the changes I've found so far besides the general Android Pie features. There are a few unique minor changes that aren't as exciting, but I'll still mention them quickly. The Bixby panel now has a black background. The home screen has some new icons for Samsung stock apps. Most people don't like them, but I don't mind. It does follow the Android 9.0 theme of making everything round and flat. And Samsung's signature for their icon packs for the past couple of years has always been rounded squares. So it makes sense that they're still following this tradition. The search bar is also a little different with bigger font and the weather widget has some new weather icons. There's also a new feature within the settings called reduce animations, which just gets rid of some animations to make your phone feel a bit faster. This includes getting rid of the transitions and the home button animation. The scene optimizer in the camera has its own separate camera mode so you can boost the colors. To be clear, it's not something new. This feature has always been in Samsung's camera settings, but now it's on the front page. Anyways, that's everything you need to know about One UI so far. The main point that I got from this major update is that Samsung is trying to make their giant phones a bit easier to use, especially with one hand. 
Everything also feels a lot smoother now. Transitions, animations, and jumping into the Bixby panel from the home screen doesn't lag the phone, which has always been a small complaint that I had, even though I don't use Bixby. And dark theme support is a plus for those looking to save battery life. Either way, if you guys enjoyed this video, go ahead and smash that thumbs up button. Shout out to XDA for providing the files needed to flash this amazing pre-release. Again, I'll drop a link to their tutorial on how to flash One UI down below. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter and Instagram at HowToMen. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Kapow!